Hi, I'm Richard Inside HPC, and we're here at SC11 at the Runtime Design Automation booth. And we have the founder and the CTO, Andrea Casato. Yeah, nice to meet you, Rich. Yes. Uh, so, who is Runtime Design Automation, and who do you help? Well, we are coming from the EDA industry, where we uh, help uh, our customers with a very high-performance scheduler that has helped uh, our customers realize very high utilizations in their uh, computing resources, especially the uh, software licenses that are particularly expensive in EDA. Uh, we are here for the first time at uh, Supercomputing because we want to see what kind of traction a very high performance scheduler will have in a generic high performance computing environment. So the runtime design automation software is designed to run at very, very high performance when it's scheduling these jobs. It's not, uh, is it like saying that it has low overhead? Would that be a way to describe it? Yeah, in fact, we believe we have orders of magnitude lower latency than uh, our competition. Uh, we schedule jobs uh, with a sub-second latency. We proposed a benchmark several years ago at the Grid Forum in Berlin. We say, why don't you try to run a thousand sleep zero. You know, sleep zeros are these tiny jobs that do nothing. This is a great experiment that exposes the latency of the scheduler. We can execute that experiment on uh, ordinary hardware at our customer site in about five seconds, which corresponds to about five milliseconds of latency per job. Our competition is on the order of seconds or more. So. The reason we achieve such high performance is that our scheduler has a very different architecture. It's an event-driven scheduler, and the entire workload is kept in memory. Our scheduler also, despite the fact that it keeps everything in memory, is also memory efficient. So when we manage workloads of, say, close to 2 million jobs in the queue, the memory footprint is about 2 gigabytes. So we can run on ordinary hardware uh, at a very high performance. Well, this is interesting. So do you have a demo? Can you show us, show us how it works? Of course I have a okay. demo. Okay. <laughs> so we have uh, actually currently preloaded our uh, scheduler with uh, several hundred thousand jobs by many users. So the uh, scheduler is currently totally saturated. I will now push a demo button here to submit the 1,000 jobs to the system. And uh, as you see, the fair share scheduling will promptly give me a little fraction of the farm as we, get, uh, as we proceed. If I want to speed up my demo, I will do reservation of the hosts so that ev every new slot that opens up will be done for my, to, to, to make my demo more impressive. And uh, right now, because the farm is actually loaded, we are completing the 1,000 uh, sleep zero uh, experiment in, in about 20 seconds or so. Okay. So, Andre, um, you have this new uh, the workload analyzer. This is a little different kind of product. What, what's this about? Yeah, this is a simulation-based product for uh, um, compute farm planning. Okay. Uh, we uh, look at the workload that the customer has uh, executed over a period in the past of, say, a few months, and uh, we capture the workload, we capture the configuration of the farm, and then we replay the workload under very different uh, uh, situations. For example, we do what's called a sensitivity analysis that allows us to identify uh, the most critical components of the farm configuration. And when we capture the yeah, can, sensitivity uh, analysis, yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, that's okay, just sensitivity up. analysis, we also inject a component of cost and we can determine what are the components that are most critical. For example, in this particular workload, we see that if we increase the farm by adding one machine like Linux 102, we get an improvement like this, a big improvement for every dollar that we spend on that machine. Versus if we get a machine like Linux 48, our improvement is much less. So for each dollar that we spend, we get big improvements, small improvements, or if we go for other types of resources, like for example, the license, 
formal pro, we get a negligible improvement. So this is a farm that is currently limited by hardware, not by software. The same way, if we want to save money, we look at the left hand side of sensitivity analysis and we see that we absolutely should not save any money in getting rid of Linux 102. We get, uh, for every dollar that we save, we get a huge penalty in delay of our workload, whereas we can easily uh, eliminate machines like Linux 26, whereby we can save uh, some dollars, some resources, and get a negligible uh, penalty in throughput. So this allows our customers to identify very quickly the critical resources and gives them a quantitative uh, um, aid in uh, performing their uh, reconfiguration of the farm. So you've had this uh, product in, in development, you've had it out there. What are the people that are using this? What, what are they telling you about? Well, people come to us looking for high performance. So they come for the speed and they actually stay for the features. The scheduler is incredibly rich as preemption, fair share, visualization. People say, wow, why don't I know more about you guys? And that's what we're trying to fix with this dialogue, isn't it? Well, great. Well, you're up here on the sixth floor. We're going to okay. get this video and come and visit Runtime Design Automation at SC11. Okay.